I know this isn't a big NBA town. I'm a big NBA fan. I say in the NBA, you win by drafting well, trading well, coaching well. Somebody currently playing on somebody else's team is the secret to our victory and issues in the 111th Congress and beyond. And in the Senate, it's becoming ever more important that we find those people. Now the challenge then for a Kit Bond is he will have that kind of seniority, he'll know the place, um, he's a guy that others kind of works and plays well with others. If there are fewer Republicans, and if by chance one of them who is defeated is the current Republican minority leader, Mitch McConnell in Kentucky, all hell's going to break loose because the Republicans are so uncertain about what their leadership ascendancy ought to look like that heaven only knows what will happen. And since I believe a senior such as Ted Stevens is going to be departing, there is even more potential for chaos in the Senate. And again, it comes right back to you. You have a senior Republican senator that you have relied on, maybe disproportionately, but he's been there, you all know him, and so, and he's delivered for you, so okay. His work is going to be even more difficult when the election is over. And you have a first-term Democrat who is probably so ill-defined that most of you couldn't stick her in a box if I gave you 20 of them here and said, who is she most like and which box does she belong in? But the Senate, especially with more Democrats, makes your state more important. So again, you have to be something other than just worrying about what takes place at the state level. In the House of Representatives, well, how low can they go? This morning I put out a piece, which again, I'm waiting for the attack of the killer tomatoes in my Blackberry, even as I'm standing up here. I said, there are going to be more Democrats in the House. That's not in dispute. I've just sort of cavalierly been throwing out the number that the Republicans could lose as many seats as they lost in 2006, which was 30. If they lost 30 seats, they would have 169 members. Now, I'm not so sure I really believe that, but I think it's closer to 30 than it is to 10. And you are going to have to tell me whether or not it's possible. Republicans will lose 30 seats, or close to 30 seats if Missouri 9, the seat that Hulsoff is vacating, doesn't stay Republican. And they will lose 20 to 30 seats if Sam Graves leaves. More than a year ago, I looked at the House of Representatives and I said, I'm sick of everybody there. I don't care if we start over and nobody gets reelected. But there have to be a handful of people that if I'm protecting my franchise, they're not tradable and I will build around them. And I had several criteria that I went through. They had to know something about food, fuel, and fiber, which I believe is going to be the debate of the future. And then somebody said, you have to add another F word of feedstock. So I needed somebody that knew those issues. I needed somebody who wasn't really very famous, a mid-bench player that could be the starter, except that everybody else has gotten more famous for doing rottenly stupid things. And so this person is kind of languishing on my mid-bench, but if my starting five foul out, I'm not going to despair because I've got this great mid-bench player and I can put that person in. Whatever political trouble he or she might have isn't of their own fault. They come from a good part of the world, they got a really good district, and they aren't going to loon out on me. I found one person in the House on the Republican side that met my definition, and that was Sam Graves. And here he's gone, and he or somebody around him has looned out by putting these horribly stupid, ineffective, I believe, ads on the air. So I'm sort of disappointed, but I'm willing to say I can be forgiving because I believe of all the people in the current Congress who ought to know something about food, fuel, fiber, and feedstock, if you can't take a corn farmer with a lot of land in that part of the world to know about that debate, we're in big trouble. I still think he comes from a good geography. I believe he is a great mid-bench player and that with all of the changes happening within the Republicans in the House of Representatives where they're fleeing Congress in droves compared to the Democrats and where they are leaving all the major committees, somebody who sits on agriculture and on transportation will be the equivalent of somebody who sits on energy and commerce and ways and means because those are the committees 
the kind of the new dynamic of the new economy are going to have to run through. So he is preeminently important in how I look at how other people are strategizing about who you're going to get rid of. You want to gain a seat if you're the quote other guys. You want to take out one of these mid bench players. You know, you don't want to take out some ineffective nobody someplace. You want to take out the Sam Graveses of the world. And so I believe that that is a very critical race for the cue giving of how important it is for the Democrats to continually expand their playing field. So I'm going to keep my eye on that race. I think it's competitive. I'm not saying he loses, but I think it's competitive. Missouri 9, I just don't know how to evaluate that. Too many candidates on both sides, too much geography that doesn't fit together, probably too much debris about whatever happens in the governor's primary. There's stuff falling all over. I can't figure out the pro-lifers. I, I can't figure out the dimensions within the pro-life community. I don't understand how Phyllis Schlafly and the Eagle Forum and the Missouri Right to Life aren't endorsing the same candidate. I can't figure out, well, I can sort of figure out how uh, Gardasil and abortion and stem cells kind of all fit together, but when it creates different choices among candidates, I get really confused. So I'm just saying, you know, I'm confused. And I don't have any real answers except to tell you that the quirkiness of open seats is such this time that there is no such thing as a safe Republican open seat, no matter who has vacated it or what used to happen. Um, governor's race is way outside my territory, but there only are 11 this time, and only a handful of those 11 are really meaningful. When I team these up and sort of try to put them in some kind of a category to take a look at, Missouri and Indiana go together in my head because Republicans won those states four years ago with governors that were anticipated to become the new NBA stars. Mitch Daniels in Indiana was going to be like the new Kevin Garnett and Matt Blunt was going to be like, well, I, I hate saying like Allen Iverson because that would indicate a form of behavior that was probably, but you know, superstars, long standing, in, incapable of being wounded. And if they were, they would play hurt. And no matter what happened, like an Allen Iverson, he was supposed to be able to tough this out because he had, a, he had quite a politically tough upbringing. You know, his dad is no shrinking violet. He's surrounded by a family of operatives. And lo and behold, he's gone. My God, it's like Greg Oden never even starting last year after he was like one or two in, number, in a draft pick. It just, these things happen. So Missouri and Indiana have always kind of gone together to see the trouble that Republican governors who were successful got into because of Republican legislatures and then a whole bunch of other stuff. Issues that were never around before and if they have been, never around in that way. For Democrats, it's North Carolina and Washington. So when I look at your gubernatorial primary, I see remnant, I hear, I'm not so sure I see, I hear remnants of 30 years ago. And I think, you know, can a mess be salvaged? And then what is the role of the business community when there is a mess? At one point, the business community might have decided that their appropriate role is a referee. And so you kind of step back and you let these people fight it out, duke it out, and unless you really have to get involved, you don't get involved. But I'm not so sure that we can play a game anymore where referees don't kind of enter the action and have to do something. But I look at your governor's race and I say, as an outsider, what a mess. And if I were here, you know, I would probably run and hide rather than try to figure out how to get involved because I don't really know who's throwing a punch at whom for what because it doesn't sort itself out the way I would ordinarily think it would.